you have any questions, concerns about the setup here, just I'm the guy to uh, follow up with. I also want to recognize our two judges here, uh, Alan and Mai. Alan is from ACI and, and Mai is from Union Pacific. Uh, so I want to thank you for giving your time to uh, you know, judge these presentations and asking uh, wonderful questions and giving directions. Um, without further delay, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mike Santo. Um, and I know, you know I look forward to this presentation because everybody has uh, tons of music that they want to organize, right? Um, and then the, the way we do it is just putting it into folders. Well, let's see what this uh, innovative idea is all about. Thanks. Take it away. So thanks for going and watching my presentation, everybody. I appreciate the interest. Um, my uh, capstone project is called Crateful. Um, it's kind of a play on words on uh, like a DJ crate. DJs used to keep their records in crates. Um, and I want people to be grateful for their, their library. Um, so I'm Mike Santo. I am the inventor, founder, developer, everything else. Um, I am an IT innovation major with my focus in music technology. Um, and I'm also, I run a software development company. Um, and I can prove that. Excuse me. <laughs> and there's some code. <laughs> uh, but I'm also a DJ. Um, I, I, I say I like DJing just about as much as I like writing code. Um, and I can prove that too. There's me. <laughs> And there's my sweet headphones. <laughs> Notice, only on one ear. That's the sign of a true DJ. So I want to give you guys some background on what DJs do in order for you to be able to really know, like, really get what makes my app special. Um, it all starts with what I call the dig. We have to go find the music that we like, that fits our tastes, and that we think will fit the tastes of the people listening to our performances. Um, so this is an, uh, like a great example dig from back before the digital age. These guys are in a record store collecting records. They make their selections and the ones that they like end up in their collection. That's a pretty big collection of, of music. Um, I can't even estimate how many actual songs are in that wall. but. When a, when whoever this DJ is goes out to do a performance, they need to make a very small subset selection of all of those records in order to play. Um, and so you get this collect, select, perform cycle. Um, and this is what we're constantly doing. We're always looking for new music. We're always organizing it. We all have different, like our own little tricks of the trade for organizing. And then this, this is really what it all boils down to. All the work boils down to this little box with a few songs in it. And this worked for a really long time. But now everything's digital. And the internet allows us to get so much more music than we ever had before. And the advent of computer music production tools makes it accessible for anyone to make music. So there's just so much more music out there. My laptop holds a bajillion of that guy's record wall. Um, so like this should be awesome. Like we should be like super stoked about this. Like as DJs, like <laughs> we like we have so much music to work with, and we can do so many cool creative things mixing these songs together. Um, that we should it's this should just be a really great thing. But there's a problem. Uh, it's, there's so much out there that it's, it's so hard to actually find and recall the music once you have it um, that you end up just kind of only playing like the last six months worth of stuff and then everything back behind that is really hard to remember. Um, and then it's also just like hard to find new stuff that you like because you have to pick through this giant haystack of music in order to find stuff that you like. Um, so this has been a problem that I've been having for a long time, and I've you know just tried to mediate it with little um, routines and you know playlists and iTunes and stuff like that. But one day I was thinking, 
what if I had a completely automated, normalized, indexed, taggable, relatable music database and combined it with some really cool similarity functions so that I can search through my library um, and find like the best tracks to mix into another track just based on certain parameters that DJs would be likely to search for. Um, so yeah, always find great tracks to mix, both old and new, quickly and intuitively. It has to be, I, th I thought to myself, like I really don't want to have to mess with this. Um, I really don't want to have to send, like click and drag my new music into a thing and have it analyze it and do all this stuff. I really didn't want to have to touch it. I want to like, download my music and then have it there available for me and have it accessible within like a few, a few presses of a button. So in order to do this, I kind of have to tell you guys about what makes two songs mixable and how we do these, like what attributes we actually do these searches on. So this is fundamental. This, this pretty much has to be there. The two songs have to be in a similar tempo because in order for two songs to lay over top of each other and still sound good, they need to have their beats lined up. And the tempo determines how far these beats are spaced out. So if this song is in 128 beats per minute, this song is in 140 beats per minute, they're not gonna match up. But these two songs are in the same tempo and they're what we call beat matched. They're lined up. So that's gonna sound really good. That's fundamental, you have to have that. Another big thing, um, it's called harmonic mixing. You look for songs that have complementary keys to each other. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not required. Uh, a lot of people don't even pay any attention to this, um, but, it, but it sounds really great, and you can use, you can use it to great effect. Um, and that's just using complementary keys. So there we want to know tempo and key. That's the two core things here. And then all the other data that it's easy to get, we can, we can relate on too. You know, songs from similar artists are gonna, are gonna have a similar sound, same genre. And then we have meta tags in the system to pretty much cover everything else, all of those human elements that a computer, we really can't get, we can't really get that, those qualities out of a song like by an analyzing it with a computer. Um, that would be something like, I would say this, it's very chill vibe, has horns, just whatever. You know, anything, any kind of attribute that I feel is important to me about a song, I can, I can tag it and then, and then use that tag for search later. And then there's a bunch of other stuff too. So I wanted it to be all, all be automatic. So what I did was I have a, you install a little desktop client on your local machine and you tell it where you store your music. And it automatically goes and it goes through all of your music files and sends them to our analysis engine. Um, and that's where we determine the things like the tempo and the, and the, and the key and stuff like that. And then we upload it to our database, and that's gonna live there forever. And then I have a web front end where a user can search, and um, it goes through our similarity engine, and out comes mixable songs. And I'm gonna show it to you, the front end. So this is quite prototype, but the basic idea is very much there. So I've already used the local client on my personal machine, and I've uploaded uh, most of my library to the web service. Um, and from my dashboard, I can see the songs that I've recently added. That's, you know, usually I'm gonna wanna see those first, so that's why I put it up here. But the meat and potatoes of it is this search functionality. So, I really like Daft Punk, and I wanna see some songs by Daft Punk. 
So I just type like that and, I, and it figures out, it determines what it thinks I'm trying to search for and it pops those search results in. See it? And it automatically loads them in. Um, so Daft Punk has, most of their songs are in 128 BPM. Maybe all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's just say that I want to see the ones that are labeled as a soundtrack. Uh, I want to see if they did that great soundtrack for the second Tron movie. And let's just say I want to do something with those and I want to see what key they're in. So, and bam, it filters down to the soundtrack. These aren't all in G minor. This is test data right now. Um, Obviously, they're not all going to be in G minor, but it gives you it gives you the idea. Um, so let's say I'm using this Nocturne song, and I want to go see maybe some other similar songs, and we'll see what it comes up with. So it comes up with a, a bunch of songs actually from the game Portal, which is funny. Um, and it's just it's looking for songs that are named sa or with the soundtrack genre in the same BPM. Uh, in the same key. So this, this similarity algorithm that I'm using right now is still very basic, but already like that's a pretty nice capability um, for DJs to have. Like, and I'm actually continually surprised myself with how good of results it comes back with. Um, so I'm really, really excited about this because it, it works really well. And the reason I ended up just building it and going ahead and doing it um, was because there's other software packages that are in this space somewhat. There's really nobody that does what Drapel does. Um, you know, people use, DJs a lot of time use the big Groove Shark, Spotify, and Pandora to find new music because they have those recommendation engines. You can tell it what kind of stuff you're looking for and it comes back with songs you think you might like. Um, but these don't offer DJs any kind of control. Uh, I can put in Pandora that I like Daft Punk, but it's not gonna keep returning songs that I can mix together. It's just gonna keep returning songs that sound like Daft Punk, I guess. Um, Recordbox is, a, is like a really simple uh, library management system, but that's really just designed for, um, Pioneer is a brand of uh, DJ equipment. And it's really just designed to interface with that. It's not really um, a standalone product. And this mix and key is the only thing that really takes into account the tempo and the key of the songs. Uh, it, it analyzes your library and gives you the, the key. But it doesn't do it automatically. Like you have to tell it to do it for each new song. And every DJ I know like thinks this is really great, but doesn't use it because you like Analyze your library once, and then you just don't care to do it anymore. It's just too much hassle, and, there's, and you're always you're downloading too much music all the time to keep running this program just to get um, key information. So that's why that's a big reason why I wanted to do it automatically in Crayful. So I thought I want to see if other DJs need a tool like this as much as I do. So I put out a survey on, a, on several online DJ communities, and I got back 296 responses. And I said, one to 10, how useful do you think Crayful would be for your workflow as a DJ? And I like that. I like that curve right there. That's like, I think probably 80% are seven or above. So I was, obviously I was just like, sweet. You know, like, <laughs> It's not just some crackpot idea. Everybody actually wants this. Um, even better, this market is exploding right now. Um, it's it's been a big thing in other like other parts of the world for a long time, but now in North America, it's just blowing up. Um, this is I think this is from late last year, or whenever the Grammys were. And here's another one from the Huffington Post. Um, Electronic dance music is surging to the forefront of mainstream tastes. It's, uh, it's been going on for a little, a little while now, and it's not gonna stop. So there's definitely a, a big growing market. 
DJs are like the new rock stars. And back in the days of rock and roll, everyone, everyone wanted to be a rock star. And just like today, everyone wants to be a DJ. And also back in the days of rock and roll, everyone wanted an electric guitar. Well, DJ equipment is the new electric guitar. Uh, it's, they're quickly commoditizing, like making it cheaper and more compact and easy for people to get into. Uh, and, and things are just flying off the shelves. There's more different kinds of DJ equipment and controllers out there than there ever were before. So, if I was thinking if turntables are the new electric guitar, Crayful is kind of like the new guitar tuner or guitar tabs, something like that. It's a tool to help musicians do what they do. And there's ways to make money off of it, it turns out. Um, a big one is actually selling songs through the app. We recommend a song to somebody that they don't have. They say, wow, I need that. And you make it one click away for them to get it. And we get affiliate deals with big major MP3 dealers um, so that we get kickbacks. Um, there's plenty more opportunities for monetization that I've thought of, but I'm kind of keeping those um, tucked away. But they're, they're there. So this is coming soon. Um, I have launch plans. I, I'm um, right now. I'm starting to bring in um, what I call like my evangelists, uh, just good DJs who are interested in the product. Um, that I'm, I'm getting in there for the, as the first testers to get their feedback and start um, uh, evangelizing grateful into, into their into their communities and then I have plans to get that to spread kind of uh, by socially um, and things are spinning up we should be actually available publicly end of the summer beginning of fall um, depending on how testing and stuff goes so that's that's great well, if you guys have any questions I'm happy to answer them what do you use for a search engine when you're doing the search? Um, I, I wrote it. It's a custom. Are you using SQL? Uh, yeah. Partially. Yes. When you were listing alternative products, most of those were for streaming songs, which is not what your software does. The, there, there's actually a product on the market right now that's nearly identical to yours called MP3 Tag. All the features you listed, it's already been doing for several years now, and it's free, and it syncs with iTunes, with iTunes, Amazon, and basically even William. What can, was it, have you taken into mind any of these kind of uh, considerations? Well, does, does MP3 Tag have a recommendation engine? Yes. It does? Yes, it I've syncs right into iTunes. Okay. Um, I've never heard of it. I'd have to take a look at it. Um, there's probably something wrong with it if I've never heard of it, because I've been researching this for a couple of years now, um, and it's just not completely not on my radar or on the radar of any of the DJs that I've talked to. Um, so there's probably a, some difference there. I'm not really sure. Um, also, what I've showed you guys is just kind of like the minimum viable product for Crayful. Um, Crayful is a set of tools, and there's a lot of other features that I have planned in the future. Um, it'll be really great for DJs, but I don't really feel the need to tell the public about them right now. Um, also, what you said about the streaming, uh, it's not the streaming that's really important there, it's the recommendation engine. Um, and those recommendation engines, like I said, don't offer DJs the capabilities that they need to find the songs that they like. What does the analysis engine look like? Is that something that you built um, yourself, or is it something that you leverage some open source technologies to yeah. analyze the tempo? And, uh, yeah, it's um, I actually use a hosted service oh, okay. called Echonest right now. Okay. Um, just kind of lean, you know. I don't have. I, I found this plugin thing. I can use it. I'll, re I'll eventually want to replace it with something more robust for my purposes later. Okay. But for for now, it's it's Echonest. What about? Would this be a subscription base, ad based, or how would you make money off of it? Um, 
like I said, um, affiliate programs with MP3. Okay, so the, the users won't pay anything for it? It would be um, ad-based? I'm thinking about putting, like doing a premium version um, with a small subscription fee, but not really um, for the purposes of monetization, more for marketing. Um, you know, people tend to value things that aren't free more than things that are. Um, so the people that I've had doing marketing stuff have actually suggested I, I do a subscription-based plan. And then I have some other tricks up my sleeve as well. How, how does the web interface in, uh, integrate with other DJ equipment? So let's say I found the song, how do I actually get it through the amps and everything? Um, that's, that's the thing right now, it doesn't. Um, I, I thought it would be great if it could be licensed and actually integrated into other things. Um, so that's a possible, another possible plan for monetization in the future. One of the big things I want to do is have um, your Crayful library actually sync back to your local library. So a big thing of what uh, Crayful does when I said there's normalization in the database is we do a lot of work to clean the uh, ID3 tags, or just the tags of the, of the music, because you can have the same song and two people will tag it in a different way, like they'll have, you know, song song name, both two words, uh, uppercase, and then somebody else have the same song, song underscore name, um, and it gets really dirty that way. So a big thing that we do is that we normalize all that data and we clean it up so that if everybody has like there's one song per song, no matter what the title is and stuff, stuff like that. <coughs> um, and that actually would be a really useful thing to sync back to a user's library um, so that it just automatically cleans all those tags for them. So then once we have that system in place, we could very easily just sync songs back, new songs that they acquire back to their library. So building off of that, um, the, the main database gets pulled from the user's music, right? Yeah. How do you handle, like you can you can look at music and there's like different remixes, but like name misspellings or something like that, is there a way that handles so that you're not getting the duplicate song listed several different ways as like the title or something? Um, well, I'm like, that's gonna be a constantly, like the cleaning of the track data is gonna be constantly improving. It doesn't do anything like that right now. Um, I'm one guy that built the whole thing. <laughs> Just go to school and work full time as well. So like this is prototype and all of that kind of stuff is is ahead. But yeah, that's that's the very big thing. Um, and also, we don't actually like key on the track title. We fingerprint the audio, so we can tell even if even if song's completely different tag, we can tell what song it actually is. So you store that fingerprint in your database? Mm -hmm. Which I think, I just looked up MP3 tag, and it looks like it's dealing only with the meta tags around the Yeah, it looks like it was long on it. Yeah, yeah. it's not, yeah. I don't think it's, it's not even, <coughs> yeah. Do I do the beats or yeah. tempos? No. Beat, tempo, key, it just fixes the tags on the MP3. It just, oh, oh so it's kind of like a cleaning tool? It's a cleaning software, mostly. Right on. It'll do groupings quite as well, so, but yeah, yours, does have an advantage on it that way. And um, a cool marketing thing about this that <laughs> I didn't even think of, but I have a, a team over at the College of Business doing their marketing capstone, and they use Crayful as the basis for that. Um, since this is kind of like the first of its kind, and users will get in there and they upload their library to it, um, it gets kind of a lock-in effect. Like, you know, they already have their library on Crayful, if somebody else tries to come second to market with something like this, people are going to be like, well, why would I want to move from, from Crayful to this new thing when I already have my library on Crayful? So I thought that was sweet. With the whole iTunes uh, cloud thing, uh, where all your music is in the cloud, um, would you have any sort of partnership with these clouds uh, you know, so that a user doesn't have to upload all their music the first time? Um, well, as more users add their music, there's like the new users won't have to upload very much. 
Um, so we'll already have the data for n songs ever, and all we do is on the user's computer we fingerprint it. We go say, do we have it? And most likely we will. If we, and then if, only if we don't have it do we upload that. You know, sometimes they are of different qualities and different license files. And how do you how do you deal with those uh, audio license if those are uh, you know, DRM protected? Um, it's actually I haven't even ran into any DRMs. Like I don't I don't know what my code would do on a, a DRM file, but um, that's it. That's definitely something I should check out. Would that data be in a cloud then? All of the music that people are uploading is that going to be in the cloud? Um, no. We I don't want to store that for now. Um, I used to, the Groove Shark um, was um, a company I used to work for. It was a, Groove Shark was one of our clients. Um, and they, they're kind of like YouTube for music. Users upload their music and then you, anyone can listen to it. Um, and they were operating on the basis of like, you know, don't up, like, we told you not to upload copyrighted stuff, um, but they still got really, really heavily uh, sued by major music labels. So it makes me really nervous just storing other people's music. And also that increased my operation costs like exponentially when I start to store files that big. Um, so right now we're just analyzing it locally, posting the data, and, and that's it. This gets you around the DRM issue that Robin brought up. You're not storing the music. You're storing the data about the music. Mm -hmm. right. That's where the MP3s. I, I don't think that was clear. Would come in. If yeah. they don't have it, they can go yeah. buy it. Yeah. So you publish to the user's computer a, a matching database that matches their files to your your uh, keys in your database, or you store that? It's you know, how you do the sync up between a file and the database entry for a particular song. Um, like, how do I tie that to like make a li like user's library? Mm -hmm. Um, users log in to the local client um, using their credentials from the web service uh, and when we post it to the web server we say this user ID this track information and most likely if we already have it we just tie those together um, in a joint table so you never actually even upload the entire song mm -hmm. um, the only time we'll upload the entire song is when we need to get it for analysis. Um, but a big thing about... And then um, you don't store it. You don't upload it, it, analyze it, and, and it's gone. it goes away. Yeah. Why not perform the analysis locally? Um, Would it be faster? Because if they have a lot of songs that aren't in your database, they're going to spend a lot of time uploading large files. It's true. It's just... Um, You're analyzing it's probably going to be a small zone. Yeah. That's like I was saying. Um, I didn't want to write this big analysis engine right now because, like, I'm not getting paid for this. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> so. <laughs> um, ideally, I think, I think it probably would, but um, this works just fine for now. And like I was saying with the with the evangelists, with like my plan for bringing in different sets of users at different times, a big thing of that is just to see the database. Like, if you get. 100, 100 DJs um, that all DJ in various genres, you're going to get a pretty large set of data already um, yeah. that you'll cover most use cases. So quickly, um, would you classify your, your project under research or development? Because uh, that, that will help the judges, I think, pick the right criteria. Oh, man. <laughs> um, Oh, probably research. Uh, no, I'm gonna say development. I say development. I'm gonna say development. Okay. So you know, I, I request other presenters if they're in the room. You know, whenever you come up there, just uh, make a declaration up front. It will help the judges. That's there you go. Yeah. Because okay. you had to you had to research certain things, and I mean, it's a, it's a combination. It's sort of an iterative process. Yeah. It definitely um, became like a research project at one point, but now it's pretty much all development, but development mixed with research, because I'm doing research on my development, developing on my research.
Okay, we're almost out of time. Let's uh, thank the speaker.